Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh For those who have questions, please wait to the final chapter on understanding Ihya Al-Muddin by Imam Al-Khazari, my name offers by Al-Fadil Ustaz Mukhtar We will have an interactive Q&A session after Asar Brace and Tibet So for now, uh, let's invite Ustaz Mukhtar for final and last chapter for the final chapter Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh uh, Before we start our The last chapter about understanding Ihya Ulum al-Din Al-Ghazali Magnum Opus Let us recite just a short dua May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala add us knowledge That will bring us closer to him inshaAllah أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه وأخوانه وذريته وأهل بيته أجمعين ما ترى يا عزيز سلطان القدر يا نقش بن ديار جميل عالم السلطان الأولياء والصلاة العظم سيد الشيخ محمد بن عبد القادر جيل عن جلال القاسم جيل بغداد أما خف الشم باشي طال عشاء الله مبارك من محمد شام عن قرم شام صاحب الوفاة جعلين وصلنا فرائم على أرواح والدينا والدينا وما شاقنا شاقنا وماتنا وماتكم ولمن أحسن إلينا ولما لو حق علينا ولما نوصونا وصوصونا وقلتنا عندك بلا خير مروا جميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات في مشارك يعظين مظالمها ومن يمينها لشمالها ومن قاف لا قاف ولا دعاه مع السلام لا يوم القيامة خصوصا الروح من الغزال محمد 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 الغزال الفاتحة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم أنك يا مدين يا كنابل ويا كنسعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه إلهي أنت مقصودي ورضاك مطلوب عقدي محبتك ومعرفتك How are you feeling now? Lembi? Huh? Still strong? Already very weak? So I'm the last one. Please don't sleep. <laughs> so inshallah, uh, I will have about uh, one hour, hmm? one hour that uh, we will together, together we will share about Ihya Ulumidin, his magnum opus. What is the meaning of magnum opus? It's the greatest book of Imam Al Ghazali. Actually, Ihya Ulumidin is one of the karama of Imam Al Ghazali. We knew of these two terms, Mu'ajizat and Karamah. Mu'ajizat is given to the prophets and Karamah is given to the saints or to the pious servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we will take a look at Karamah and we understand Karamah. Karamah is not something that a saint who can fly, a saint who can do uh, something which is uh, out of the mind. But writing a book also can be the biggest karama of Imam Al Ghazali. Huh? Inshallah, I will do it as light as possible. Uh, Ustaz Anwar has done a magnificent job in explaining the aqidah and faith of Al Ghazali, which is a bit heavy. Huh? So we will do very very light, huh? so that at the end of the day, Inshallah. Uh, we will gain something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Holy Quran Ya ayu al-ladhina amanu attaqullah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun O you who believe have taqwa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala haqqa tuqatihi the real taqwa wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun and don't you all pass away except that you all are in the total submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is our journey, this is our purpose of life, this is our objective in living in this dunya that we all will become the taqwa people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all of us become those who are obedient in the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also obedient in refraining from all his restrictions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the purpose of coming here 
of learning about Allah Ghazali. This is the purpose of now we are going to read from the Ihya Ulumuddin so that we can get closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala so that can, we can find the real meaning of life. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran We did not create jinn and human except to worship us So today we will talk about Ihya Ulumuddin InshaAllah by the end of the day at least all of us understand what is Ihya Ulumuddin InshaAllah Okay From the notes given uh, From the notes given We will read from the notes uh, The slide, I only do four slides uh. I was too busy do organizing this thing, so I just cut and paste on you know, normal lah, our job today is what? Cut and, cut and paste lah Imam Ghazali, he wrote oh, He think and write For us, we take internet, cut, paste, cut, paste This is us lah And after that, we yaya banyak lah uh, We show people that we are smart and so and so forth uh, So today, we will learn about Ihya so that we will have that level of taqwa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Okay, we will go through the notes eh, at page 48 Li ihya ulumuddin was Imam al-Ghazali's magnum opus Even though he wrote many books The biggest book is Ihya ulumuddin He chose the title Ihya ulumuddin means revival of Islamic sciences It was composed at the time the Knowledge of Islam was almost covered by other knowledge especially Greek philosophy, Aristotle philosophy, which were greeted well by members of Islamic thought, which is spearheaded by Al-Farabi, Ibn Sina and others in the East, and then spread to the West after Ghazali, led by Ibn Rushd. Imam Ghazali finally found that the way to get close to Allah, knowing Allah, Ma'rifatullah, could only be achieved through a way, which is the way of the Sufi. He learned aqidah, he learned philosophy, he learned everything But in the end, he chose the way of the He chose the way of the Sufi Why he chose the way of the Sufi will be explained later The Fuqaha uh, Who are the Fuqaha? The Fuqaha are the Fagi Those who are expert in their fiqh uh, They memorize the fiqh of Shafi'i, Hanbali, Maliki, Hanafi They spend time in discussing legal and falsehood Ignoring the importance of the inner dimensions of worship They spend time talking about This is haram, this is makro, this is sunnah This is wajib, this is fardu Oh yes, taking wudu According to Anafi, you must Wipe one quarter of your head According to Maliki, the whole of your head According to Shafi, one strain of hair is also enough So this discuss here and there Discuss, discuss, discuss Everything about fikir But you forget the inner dimension of, of worship in the end, there are times when the Fuqaha, they fought against each other They think that they are right They fought against each other And this shows that it is not true, this is false Whereby we, we Muslims, we Muslims, when we talk, when we talk also about Islam, we, will, we can't fight with each, with each other We must be patient, we must love everybody the most important thing in the world today is that love is already lost We don't have love anymore We don't love our family We don't love our children We don't love our friends A lot of hypocrisy is going on So Ihya Ulumuddin is bringing us back to the love To the love of Allah To the love of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam To the love of the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam These are the Fuqaha at that time and the Sufis too concentrated with Dhok. Dhok means the shok. The shok. You know what is shok? The ladat, kemanisan. Best at, at times ignore the practice of the Prophet. They did things. The Sufis, they do, it, they do their ibadat, but not in line with the Sunnah of the Prophet. The real Sufi are those whose practices are all based from the Quran and the Hadith of the Prophet. Muhammad sallallahu sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam So, he said this thing is happening at that time So what he did, he said we need the sawf to make ourselves humble and gentle But we need to take note of the sharia We pray, mashaAllah, Allahu Akbar We really want to have khushu in our salat Which is very important 
but we also need to know the fiqih of solat. We need to know what are the things that nullify the solat. If we have shok in our prayer, we have khushu in our prayers, but we do not know that uh, we do not know that movement three times con- continuously will nullify our prayers. That means the dhuq in our prayers, even though there's ni'mat, even though there's inner dimension of the worship, but if the sharia is not followed, it will be batil. So we need to have the fiqh and also the, the tasawwuf. Okay. We need sharia to cater for our to cater for our daily needs and it will be without any essence if tasawwuf is missing in ourselves. Sharia without the soul is like the carcass without life. The soul without the Sharia is like life without the body. Like what Sir Anwar had mentioned just now. Whosoever have a vege without the soul is a fasik. Fasik is someone who continuously makes sins to Allah. And whoever had the soul but without fiqih is a zindik. It's more dangerous. Zindik is someone who is a stray. And those who ever have the soul and fiqih faqat ta'aqqaqa. These are the true people. These are the one who will find the reality of ibadah, the reality of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Imam Ghazali, he put sharia and tasawuf together. And therefore he wrote this book, Revival of the Religious Sciences, which is called Ihya, Ihya Ulum Deen. Okay, Ihya is a compilation of all Muslim religious sciences, theology, kalam. Jurisprudence, Fiqh, Tafsir, Ilmu Hadith, Sufism, etc. Interpreted and arranged from a single point of view. How to make preparation for meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our ultimate objective. Is that we are going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنٌ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَّ we call bin Salim the day whereby there's no benefit of your wealth and your children except for those who comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the purest heart. That is the most important thing. In Allah la yanzuru ila suwarikum wa la ila aksalikum bal yanzuru ila qulubikum wa niyatikum. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not look at your appearance but he look at your hearts. He look at your intentions. This is the worst thing. This is the ever worst thing is happening in the world whereby we are already being we are full of sicknesses in our heart. We we need we need to to get the proper medicine to be proper. Our heart is full of sickness, it's full of dirt. Our heart is full of sins to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is where we have to bring back ourselves to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though sometimes, and shaitan, la'anatullah, he will do, he will make you to see something that is good. But there's evil inside it. For example, one who seek knowledge, he will tell that that talabul ilm, the student of knowledge, he said that you go and seek knowledge and become ulama. So that you get the title of ulama. You get this, you get that. This is the trick of shaitan also. But in a good manner. You do this, you do that, you read the Quran, mashallah, you do, you, you become imam, you become whatever it is. But shaitan will come in and tackle you there. To have riyah, to have ujub, to have takabur and everything. And ihya ulum din. Imam Ghazali tackle all these things. He will tell all the things, all the bad habits, bad characteristics of the heart, and he give us the medicine to him, the remedy on how we can change into a better person, on how we can become uh, a servant of Allah who is ikhlas lillahi ta'ala. We can do a lot of ibadah. We can pray, we can fast, we can, we can pray the whole night, we can do any ibadah. But ikhlas is the most difficult part. That is the most difficult. Everybody can define what is ikhlas, but they do not know what really ikhlas is. How can you do a thing? Lillahi ta'ala, everything you do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is something which is which needs which need knowledge. We need a sheikh, a teacher to guide us. Which need time. 
We need time to cure the sickness of the heart. This is are all discussed in the book Ehya Ulumuddin. Okay, in the other words, the Ehya is an attempt to evaluate all the religious sciences according to the newly oriented Muslim way of life. As for the contents, uh, now I will talk about as for the contents. As for the contents, the work is divided into four quarters. Uh, Rubu. Rubu in Arabic means quarters. So Imam Al Ghazali he divided the book into four quarters. And each quarter into ten books. So total there will be forty. Uh, four? Four zero. In the first quarter, entitled the act the act of worship. So Imam Al Ghazali he starts the book with the act of of worship. The first quarter is the act of worship, and then he divide it into ten chapters. Imam Ghazali first clarifies the meaning and function of knowledge, and the basic dogma in outline. Then proceeds to expound the external forms and merits of the act of worship, such as ablution, ritual prayer, fasting, pilgrimage, and so forth while emphasizing their inner meanings and mysteries and the secrets as he understands them. We will go, inshallah, deeper after this. In the second rubo, the second quarter, entitled the norms of daily life, the adat, uh, the adat. Imam Ghazali deals with the norms and ethics according to the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. in the rest of the Muslim daily activities which are needed for his daily life and his devotion to God. In the third, entitled The Way to Perdition, Muhlikat, Kehancuran, Perdition means Kehancuran, Destroy. Imam Ghazali deals with the norms, Imam Ghazali investigates the essential and cosmological nature of man and his ordinary states and clarifies the evil traits of man which are obstructive to man's approach to God and his salvation the hereafter together, together with the methods to remedy and correct them. And in the fourth, entitled The Way to Salvation. Now, after you read the third chapter, your heart is ready. Click. So what are the methods for salvation? To go to Jannah. Because our aim is Jannah. There's no other way. It's either Jannah or Nar. Waliyadu Billah. If someone enters Nar, the hellfire, he will be, he will regret for his whole life. So we now choosing the way to Jannah. Qad aflaha man zakaha wa qad khaba man dasaha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, those who purify themselves, they will, they will be successful. And those who make themselves dirty, they will, they will regret for their life. So Imam Ghazali described the various stages and states and stages of man's spiritual development in his own way. Okay? The division are as follows. Okay? Now inshallah, we will go through one by one. Quarter one, the acts of worship ibadah. The first is on knowledge. On knowledge, Imam Ghazali he will explain the merits of seeking knowledge, the merits of ulama, the merits as a student of knowledge. He will explain also what are the knowledge that are needed, the fardu'ain knowledge. Knowledge is divided into into two. One is fardu'ain, which is wajib. For us to learn. Number two is Fardu Kifaya. Fardu Ain knowledge is been explained in, in Ihya Ulumidid, which are we know Fardu Ain. We will go to Madrasa, we will learn about prayers, Tahara, and so on and so forth. That is on Fiqh, on Tawheed. Also, we learn about the Sifa, Doplo, and so on and so forth. The basic one. But there's another, the third one, Fardu Ain. The purity of the heart. That is also Fardu Ain. How to wash the bad attributes? How to curb our anger? How to curb our nafsu shawar? One hand nafsa anil hawa fa inna jannata hi al mawa. Those who have, those who oppress their nafs, their place will be the heaven. Allah subhanahu wa taala says in the Holy Quran. So this is the difficult part. The the most difficult farduain will be the tasawwuf. Because you need time, you need patience, you need perseverance. As we are also living in the world where there's a lot of martial, there's a lot of a lot of distraction. Here and there. Facebook also one shell, big shell done. 
Facebook can be good, can be shaitan, depending on how you use it. If you use it for good, alhamdulillah, then it, it becomes a positive impact on you. If, if you use it in the other way around, it will become shaitan. It will lead you to destruction. But there are people who are 50-50. One day they become angel, another day they become shaitan. Or one hour they read hadith Quran from the Facebook, and another one hour they go kepo look at people pictures. Also. A lot of people. Huh? Allah alam sawab. So we must be careful huh, on all this. And after that, on the articles of faith, of aqidah, just now Imam, Imam Anwar, Ustaz Anwar, Ustaz Anwar Hussein have explained in detail. MashaAllah, I also got a headache. Uh, but very good, marvelous explanation. Because it's very important, very, very important that he explained just now. So that we realize which aqidah is the correct one. The aqidah of Ash'ari. Now, because nowadays, like what he said, nowadays people all go back to Quran and Sunnah, Quran and Sunnah, but they don't understand what is Quran and Sunnah. You think what Imam Ash'ari, Imam Shafi don't follow Quran and Sunnah, then what they do? They are the one who really follow the Quran and, and Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in Ihya, he mentioned about Aqidah also. On the third one, on the inner meanings of purification, explains about wudu. But wudu, nowadays we think our wudu is only the we clean ourselves, the outer part, but not the inner part. In Yahya, when we did, we will explain the inner meaning of Tahara, the inner meaning of Wudu. Imam Ghazali, he will bring us to the dunya, he will shift us from dunya to akhirat when we take our Wudu. This is the miracle of Imam Ghazali. He mentioned, when you are, when you are gagali, komomul, you recite dua. Allahumma a'inna ala, ala tilawati kitabik wa kathrati dhikri lak. Oh Allah, help us in reciting the Holy Quran. Help us in remembering you. Wash away all our sins that we have done with our tongue. When we do our wudu, are we doing this? Every day we take wudu so far. Then we go and pray. No inner meanings of purification. When we wash our face, we make the niyat. Nawaitu rafa al hadathil asghar. Nawaitu fardal wudu. But at the same time, you make dua, Oh Allah, whiten my face. Brighten my face like you brighten the face of your prophets and all your awliya in the day of resurrection. And do not make our face black. Like you blacken the face of your enemies in the day of resurrection. So in wudu itself, he brings us to akhirah. He brings us in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what is lost today. This is what we do not have today. That's why our worship is just a ritual thing. Our worship does not bring us close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah already said, Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. Verily, prayers will bring, will, will stop you from doing what is haram. But our, our prayers are our wudu. Bring us away from the haram. No. Why? Because there's no inner dimension of it. When you wash your hand also, Imam Ghazali make dua. Allahumma a'tini kitabi bi yamini. Wa hasibni hisaban yasira. Oh Allah, in the day of resurrection, when you give me my book, Give me my book with my right hand. So when you wash your hand also, you must remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is on wudu. Then after that, you go to the inner meanings of ritual prayer. In the ritual prayer also, when you want to pray, Imam Ghazali will mention in Isi'ahya, when you want to stand, when you want to be at the place where you pray, you must know that your Lord is watching you. Your Lord is watching every movement of yours. Do not pray, just pray only. The first prayer. You must pray and have that muraqabah. That muraqabah is lost today. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us. Those who are in the armies, they can march very well. 100% concentration. But why when we pray, we cannot concentrate? This is khiyanat. 
We are making khiyanat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are doing a lot of wrong things. This is the time now where we open up our eyes, open up our heart, and we surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ana inda munkasrati qulubuhum min ajli. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I will be with those whose heart is broken because of me. Who feel that he is nothing. Who feel that he will depend on me in everything. Allah said, I will be with them. Because when the ego overpower a person, when the ego says to the person, you are right, you are good, you are smart, you are doing your prayer, other people are not doing your prayer, you are uh, someone who loves to go to the mosque, you are better than this, you are better than that. This is the problem whereby until today we haven't, have not reached Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is Ihya Ulumuddin. Imam Ghazali will discuss it in detail on this on these important things which are missing in today's society. It happened 900 years ago. 900 years ago, this mishap, this problem was uh, hap happened at that time. What's more today? 900 years ago was like that. Today, do you think it's better or worse? Huh? We have YouTube today better or worse? Of course it gets worse. Now is much much more worst. But Alhamdulillah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give us nikmat that He wrote this book for us to to read and to be guided to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So these are the things that is mentioned, the inner dimension on the act of on the act of worship, the ritual prayer. When you make your ruku, when you make your sujud, when you are reciting the Fatiha, it explain in detail. The state of a man in that prayer, what he should recite, what he should feel, how he should connect himself to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, because salat silah bain al abdi wa rabb. Prayer is the connection, is the connection between Allah and the servant. This is where you get closest to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in your prayer. That is the reason why Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed and his feet were swollen. Because he was standing straight and not moving, reciting the Holy Quran, and was full with full concentration. Because when you stand and not moving for hours, your feet will get swollen. This is what happened to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And if you read Nihya, Imam Ghazali will give few examples of our Salafus Salih who prayed, who prayed when by when he was praying, his whole house was burned down. Really. But he still continued praying. He did not realize that his house was finished. Another one, Salafu Saleh, who prayed, he felt the heat. He felt the heat. The house was burned. The house was burned. He thought that he was going to hell by you. To that concentration of prayer of the Salafu Saleh. Now we put ourselves, we compare ourselves and them. Nowadays, we pray and watch television also again. <laughs> Subhanallah. What, what, what is happening with us? Something wrong is happening with us. So this is the time whereby we bring back ourselves to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And after that, you will mention on the inner meanings of almsgiving on zakat. Zakat, when you give zakat, what is the tsawf in zakat? Actually, when you give zakat, that should you should feel insaf, you should feel tawbah. When you give zakat to the poor people, you should you should increase your shukur to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You should wipe off the greed in your heart when you are doing zakat. These are the inner meanings of zakat, and the inner meanings of fasting. Imam Ghazali mentioned fasting is not only to curb, to to not to eat and drink. But fasting also, there's a deeper meaning in fasting. To fast the eyes, to fast the ears, to fast the mouth, to fast the hand, to fast the leg, to fast the private parts, to fast everything. To fast the heart other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is fasting. Fasting is to remember Allah in the heart 24-7. That is fasting. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there are many people who fast they don't get anything except for thirst and hunger. 
So do not be in this group. Ramadan is coming in three months. So we get a deeper meaning of fasting. Whereby fasting bring us to taqwa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every Ramadan, you go to all mosques in Singapore, you go to all mosques in the world also, they will read, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum musiyam kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattakun la'allakum tattakun hope mudah-mudahan la'allakum is hope that with fasting you will become tattakun you can you will become taqwa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Ramadan is coming don't wait for Ramadan prepare now Rejab Sha'ban now is Jamadul Akhir Jamadul Akhir Rejab Sha'ban there are three more months before before Ramadan start preparing now so when you are in Ramadan, you are totally prepared, totally prepared to be with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We must remember this: there's no other bigger ni'mat other than Ma'rifatullah. When you know your God, when you know who created Al Khaliq, Allah created us. When we know who is Allah, you will get all the blessings in life. Not only in Akhirah, in dunya also, everything will be good for you. This is the promise of Allah. Wa yataqillaha yaj'al lahu makhraja. This is in the Holy Quran. Whosoever make taqwa to Allah, Allah will give way out. Everything. You are in problem. You are having whatever difficulties when you have taqwa to Allah. When you worship Allah outer and with the inner dimension of spirituality, Allah will give you way out. 100% guarantee. No doubt about it. Then after that, Imam Ghazali explained on the meanings, inner meanings of pilgrimage about Hajj. Going to Hajj. Laisa lahu al jaza illa al jannah. Al Hajj al mabrur. Laisa lahu al jaza illa al jannah. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, Hajj mabrur is that there is no. The reward will be al jannah. The reward will be paradise. But what is the meaning of the the inner meanings of? Of pilgrimage, Imam Ghazali explained that. Uh, he explained about about Sa'i. When you walk from Safa to Marwa, those who are going to Umrah, you can apply this. When you are going to Safa to Marwa, Imam Ghazali said, imagine that you are walking at the mizan, the weighing scale in Akhirat, the right and the left, which one will be heavier? Subhanallah. So you walk. Sa'i you remember in Akhirah. When you are in Arafah for the Hajj, 9 of Dhul Hijjah, you imagine that you are in Mahshar. You are in Mahshar with millions of people, countless of creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine you are there. That's why in Hajj everybody will wear ihram. Whether you are a scholar, you are a king, you are whatever it is, you are rich or you are poor, everybody will wear the same, the same clothes. So these are the inner dimension of, of worship, which explains only the first part. There's three more parts. And one part is this thing. Huh? This thing. Huh? This, thing. this is the Arabic text. This is the Arabic text. So this is only one part. And he wrote four, four volumes. Of Ihya Ulumuddin. And he not only write Ihya Ulumuddin, he wrote so many books. Close to 100 books Imam Ghazali wrote. And he lived only for 50, how many years? 54 years. About that. MashaAllah. Then after that, after you do the, all the pillars of Islam, the five pillars of Islam, he mentioned on the forms of reading the Quran, on the adab. Asrar Quran. You are reading the Quran, not just reciting the Quran, but there are adab in reciting the Quran. Afdalu ibadati ummati tilawatul Quran. The best form of ibadat of my ummah is reciting the Holy Quran. There's no other ibadat after fardu prayer which is better than reciting the Holy Quran. Because reciting the Holy Quran, you are reciting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala words. But there are adab to it. You must have wudu, you must facing the qiblat, you must, you must feel the khashya, you must feel the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are reciting, when you are reciting verses 
on the pair of paradise you must make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us one of the dwellers in paradise when you recite the verses on on the hellfire you must seek refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these are some of the adabs of reciting the holy quran part of the adab which is mentioned in the in the ihya then he mentioned on invocation and supplication on adhkar on dhikr on dua the importance of dhikrullah ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu dhikrullah dhikran kathira wa sabbihuhu bukratan wa asila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Oh you believe, remember Allah Dhikran kathira in abundance In abundance Kathira, Allah said that Wasabbihuhu bukratan wa asila Make tasbih to him in the morning and in the evening And dhikr, dhikrullah Remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Is the command of Allah And the command of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it's not the command of your teacher, not the command of your sheikh, it's not the command of anyone, but it's the command of Allah. Allah is telling us to, to remember Him. You remember me, I remember you. It's very simple. Allah says in the Holy Quran, You remember me, I, I remember you. When you remember me, I remember you. I will shower you my mercy, I will shower you my love. I will shower you everything because you remember me. But if you forget me, you will be away from me. You will be far from me. I don't want to be near you. You be with the kuffar. You be with the munafikin. You be with those who likes to debate, who likes to fight among each other. You be with those. Why it this? Because you don't remember me. But when, when a, a servant of Allah remember Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Then he will get Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'innul qulub Know that with the remembrance of Allah Your heart will find peace This is what we want in the world today We want our heart to be in peace Our heart is full of turmoil, turbulence, earthquake, tsunami, everything in our heart We are finding a way so that we can get peace in our heart if you have peace in your heart, if Israel come and take your life, so you will be at peace. Because you go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in tranquility, in peace. This is also explained. Imam Ghazali will explain what are the dhikr that was recited by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The ad'iyah, the dua of Prophet Muhammad, the dua of Prophet Ibrahim, the dua of Prophet Dawood. All the dua of the Anbiya and the Salihin mentioned in Ihya Al-Muddin You can just speak and read and read and read Then after that Imam Ghazali mentioned Book 10 on the daily offices About Qiyamul Layl Waking up at night and praying Tahajjud On the methods of waking up at night What are the things that we should do before we sleep What are the things that we can recite before we sleep So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us in waking up at night we are people who love to sleep. Imam Ghazali are those who hate to sleep. The awliya of salihid, the saints of Allah, the ulama, they find sleep is, is something secondary. It's not important for them. But for us, mashallah, if we wake up for tahajjud, we will think ten times. How am I going to work tomorrow? If I don't sleep now, how am I going to school tomorrow? I cannot concentrate if I pray tahajud. Two rakan of tahajud, you give an excuse, I cannot go to work. But if you want need to go to the toilet, you will still wake up and go. And go to the toilet. You don't say, never mind, I sleep. Ah. Tomorrow morning I go to the toilet. Ah. Later difficult ah, in the office. There's no such thing, this is shaitan. So Imam Ghazali teach us how. What are the du'a to be recited before you go to sleep? You make wudu first. You read ayah to kursi. You read the du'a. You face the qibla while you are sleeping. Imagine yourself in, in kubur, in the grave for a while. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take your life tonight. What are the verses of the Holy Quran that are to be recited before sleeping? These are the ethics. These are the adab. These are the 
things which is very small but we are not doing it which we lost in today's world we talk and talk and talk but we don't there's no amal at all now we have to lift up the amal we have to do we have to do what Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam do we have to do what the scholars do so that we are in their path so that we are guided so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love us so this is the quarter one the quarter one of of Ihya Ulumuti then we go to the next quarter quarter two the norms of life <coughs> you were mentioned on the ethics in eating in eating also they are Adam in eating Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam give us a lot of Adam if you read in Tirmizi, you read in Ihya there's a lot of things mentioned in the adab of eating. Before eating, you have to wash your hand. There's a riwayat in, in Ahya al Muddin. When you wash your hand before you eat, you zeal al It will make you, it will wipe off, from, uh, wipe off poverty from you. When you eat, of course, we eat with the right hand. When you eat, you don't lean. Now, some people, they like to lean. Watch television, popcorn, cook. MashaAllah. Big boss. This is not the this is not the adab of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam while he's eating. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam eat a little. He don't eat until he's full. Imam Ghazali, mashaAllah, he mentioned about the importance, the benefits of jaw, the benefits of hunger, near to sixteen benefits of hunger. For us, we badal brainy, nasi, wah, mashaAllah. Everything we bedal. Imam Ghazali don't eat brainy. He eat brain, korma, a bit only. Because they are, because food will make us lazy in waking up at night. Food will make the brain dead. And so on and so forth. This will mainly be mentioned in, in Ihya al Muddin. But on the ethics or in eating, when you eat uh, adab, when you eat in sahan, in a group, eat at your portion only. Don't go and... <laughs> because that person get the daging, eh? you don't get the daging, you go and take the daging. No, that is not the adab of eating. The adab of eating to take that part of yours. Never mind, fight the nuts, don't get the daging, it's okay, huh? We all want to, to go to the path of Allah, we have to curb, we have to control our desire. So these are the things. These are the basic things, norms of daily life. If we read Ihya, inshallah, it will be beautiful. We, we will adopt the character of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu That is the most important thing, while we are eating, we follow the way of Rasulullah. While we are walking, we follow the way of Rasulullah. While we are doing wudu, we are praying, everything we follow the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then he mentioned on the ethics in marriage. A lot of things. If you want, if you want to continue the seminar until Maghrib, I can explain everything. But we have to, we have to cut short. We have to cut short. On the ethics in earning a livelihood, the importance of halal, you know, halal food, halal livelihood, and so on and so forth. On the lawful and the unlawful, the halal and haram. On the ethics in companionship, your friends. There's adab in friendship. There's adab, proper adab with your friends. There's adab between the teacher and the murid. There's adab between the murid and the teacher. All this, are we following it or not? Sometimes we do things that is out from the adab of friendship. Sometimes we say some things which is which is not adab towards our teachers. What's more, if we are what's more, if we are visiting a saint, a man of God, a, a person who is very close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, don't dare to say something which which will bring which which will have no adab. And so on and so forth. These are important things. Because uh, Habib Abdul Rahman Sagar says, I love this verse of his. Habib Abdul Rahman Sagar says, Man laysa lahu adab fahwa duk. Whoever do not have adab, 
he's like a wild bear. You know what is bear? B -E -B -E -A -R, B-E-A-R, bear. Bruam. You know what is bruam? Uh, those don't have adab, he's bruam. Uh, in Malay, simple. Uh, that means he do things like an animal. If you don't have proper adab, if you don't have knowledge, if you don't have the ethics in eating, don't have the ethics in everything, you will be like the animals. And we do not want to be like that. Laqad karamna bani Adam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said we have muliakan, we have put bani Adam, the, the children of Adam at the top. And we are different from, from haywat. So he said something which is very beautiful. Those who don't have adab, he is a beruang. So we must have an adab. When we go to someone's house, so we must have proper adab. If not, people will, will see. We will look, mashallah, what is happening with this person. So in Ihya is mentioned all these ethics. Then after that, on seclusion, on Uzla, okay, about Uzla, on the ethics in traveling, about Musafir, when you suffer, what are the things that you should do? The Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the ethics in traveling. Before you leave the house, you have to pray two rakan of Sunnah, Safar. You have to recite du'a, you have to do this, you have to do that, and so on and so forth. Even one of the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that when you come back from Safar, you buy present, gift for your family. Uh, this is the Sunnah, Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. On, uh, on spiritual audition and ecstasy, on enjoying good and forbidding evil, Amal Ma'arub Nay Munka, on living as exemplified in the virtues of the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, this is the quarter, quarter two of, of Ihya al Okay. The next one, quarter three, the way to perdition. Four, four or five, here, yeah? Asar is four. 21. Then we finish at 430. It's okay, right? Pray Asar later again. We become Hanafi today. Okay. Uh, quarter 3. The way to Mohalikat. Book 1. Exposition of the mysteries of the heart. Ajaibul Gal. The, uh, the mysteries of the heart. On the discipline of the soul. MashaAllah. Riyadatun Nafs. Oh, this is the most difficult part. When you want to fight your Nafs. When you want to discipline your Nafs. Imam Ghazali said in Minhajul Abidin, he said that to fight one nafs is much more difficult than fighting 70 shaitan. Fighting seven zero shaitan is easier than fighting your, your nafs. So he will mention on the discipline of the soul. But, but after this, at the end of the lesson, I extract one part of Ihya we will read. On the methods on how we can know our faults and how we can improve ourselves, inshallah. Huh? I I take extract from the on the discipline of the soul. After this, we will read together from Ihya al Mudin. Then on the cure of the two desires. What are the two desires? Afatul Batan wa Afatul Farj. The sickness of the stomach. That means about Ju al Atash, about uh, Shiba, about full. When your stomach is full, there are so many sickness. And how to cure it? The cure to it is, as we have mentioned, you must keep yourself hungry. Keep yourself hungry, but of course you need to know. Don't keep yourself too hungry, that is also wrong. Now you have to know yourself. If you are doing something which will harm your health, then don't do it. Okay. Then after that, on the harms of the tongue, subhanallah. Uh, on the harms of the tongue, Imam Ghazali mentioned 20 harms of the tongue. 20, 20, 2, 0. He mentioned about 50, 60 pages. On the harms of the, of the tongue. Only. For example, Al-Kalam fi ma la ya'ni. Talking uh, nonsense. Speaking uh, something which is, does not give benefits. Rasul Mala Adil Al Qadr. Then number two, Al Fudul. You know what is Fudul? Anyone know what is Fudul? Kepo. 
Hmm. Imam Ghazali also know about kepo at that time. Al Fudul bil Kalam. He mentioned uh, about kepo. How to curb this kepo sickness. Everything want to know about people. Uh, okay, then after that, he mentioned about al riba, about backbiting. And backbiting does not restrict to those, to the one who speaks, but also to the listener also. The listener is part of the backbiter. Uh, then, uh, okay, and then after that, book five, uh, denunciation of anger, rancor and envy, or uh, anger. This anger is another one biggest door of shaitan, la'anatullah. He loves those who get angry. And one hadith of the Prophet sallallahu mentioned in Ihya, qala Abu Darda, qultu ya Rasulullah, dallani ala amal yudkhilunil jannah, qala la taghda. Abu Darda radiyallahu an, one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said to the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, show me a way, one amal, whereby it will make me enter Jannah. He wants a shortcut. He goes to the Prophet, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. he said, Ya Rasulullah, give me one way so that I can enter paradise. And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, La taghda, don't be angry. This is companion. Companion also sometimes they are angry. So what about us? And Rasulullah SAW said, La taghda. Because the danger of anger is mashallah. Someone can become crazy with anger. We are also, we are also facing this big problem of anger also. Why we are in the car also, we are angry. Someone don't give signal also, you get angry. We are sick people. Eh? People don't give signal, so we, are get, we get angry. Huh? We are in a restaurant, we wait for five minutes for our food, so we get angry. Why is it very long? We wait, no, 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 no. Why do you want to get angry for this? So many things we get, we get angry. Bus late, also angry. MRT spoiled, no need to get angry. Really, eh? Normal. Really. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> there are many examples we can give. Okay, denunciation of anger, rancor, and envy. Okay, number six, denunciation of the world. Hobbut dunya. The love of the world. How, how we can live in our life and not be too engrossed in the world. Uh, so Imam Ghazali taught us the danger of the world. What are the necessary things that we should take from the world? And what are the things that we should put away in this world? So that we get back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then after that, denunciation of uh, al-bukhul and avarice. Hubbul ma al-bukhul. Haji bakhil. Mizal greed. This one also he mentioned about the danger of it. And how to, and the remedy for it. The most important thing is everything that he said, he give the remedy. So it's easier. Yeah? He talk about the sickness, he give us the medicine. If we take the medicine, we will be cured. Alhamdulillah. Okay, then after that, denunciation of fame and hypocrisy. Uh, fame. Nowadays, people like to be fam famous. Like to be mentioned. Uh, in Madras, they want their name to be mentioned. They like it. Uh, hypocrisy, munafik. Uh, munafik, subhanallah. Those uh, heart have hypocrites. In front of... Everybody is like an angel. Behind back of the curtain is the shaitan. He's doing maksiat behind the curtain. He, he's thinking that nobody can see him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is watching him. He forgets that. Uh, this is hypocrite. Uh, the hypocrite will suffer severe punishment in the, day, in the hereafter. Then denunciation of pride and conceit. Denunciation of declusion. This is the third quarter. After the third quarter, Imam Ghazali mentioned about quarter four, the way to salvation, munjiyat. How are we going to save ourselves? How are we going to put ourselves, clean ourselves? After we have cleaned ourselves, what are the things that we should have that characteristic in ourselves? Number one is on repentance. The first important thing, if you want to walk the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first thing you have to do is repentance, tawbat. Ya ayu ladina amanu tubu ilallah tawbatan. Tawbatan naswa. Oh, people, oh, you who believe, tubu ilallah, repent to Allah, return to Allah. Tawbatan naswa with the with the tawbat naswa with the proper tawbat. Hmm. 
The proper tawbah is that a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will regret what he had done. Any mistake, any sins that he had done, he will regret. We take the example of Adam alayhi salam. Prophet Adam, when he ate the khuldi, he regretted. Uh, this is the way of, of tawbah. After he regret, he must know that he, he must make the azam that he will not repeat the sin again. When he do not repeat the sin again, when he regret what he had done, shows it shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted his repentance. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted his repentance, alhamdulillah, then he will be close to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will get a way of salvation. Inna Allah yuhibbu tawwabin. Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love those who make tawbah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam make istighfar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 70 times every day. He make istighfar to Allah. Who are we? Why, why are we not uh, making istighfar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? At least 70 times follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But of course we need more than 70 times. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is ma'asum. He has not done any sin yet but he still seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Practice doing istighfar. While you are walking, while you are in your motorbike, while you are in MRT, while you are in the bus, while you are in the taxi, while you are everywhere in the car, everywhere, make a lot of istighfar. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Seek forgiveness from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will feel good. You will feel better. Because it is a cure. Dhikrullah shifa'ul kulub. When you remember Allah, it will cure the, the sickness in the heart. So practice. But practice, practice, practice. Inshallah, you will get the ni'mah. The first step, you will, you will, you will feel the bitterness of the medicine. You will feel it is difficult for me to do this. I want to recite it still far. Very difficult. There's a lot of shaitan, a lot of distraction. But you have to bear with it. You have to fight it. You have to, to, to eat the medicine. You have to feel the bitterness first. And after that, when the sickness is cured, you will get the sweetness of iman. Alhamdulillah When you get the sweetness of Iman Then it is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Iman is between us and Allah Nobody knows Nobody can judge our Iman Nobody can say that your Iman is weak Your Iman is wrong We, we are the one who judge Who judge ourselves Then on patience and gratitude On fear and hope On poverty and ascetism On divine unity and dependence On love On love, longing, intimacy and contentment on intention, single-heartedness and sincerity, on self-emination and self-account, tafakkur, muhasaba, on meditation, on the remembrance of death and the afterlife. Uh, this is the part four of the way to the way to salvation. So this is how Imam Ghazali divide, divided his Ihya Hulumuddin into four quarters. Every quarter there are there are ten books. Okay. okay, so now what are we going to do for the next 15 minutes? We are going to read page 54. Now, page 54. We don't have time to read everything. So, we, we will read page 54. An exposition of the way in which a man may, may discover the faults in his soul. So, when we are reading this with full concentration, we make the intention. Lillahi ta'ala ikhlas for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And may we read this part The part of Ihya Ulumuddin May we get benefit from it And before I forgot I, I, I'm, I scared that I forgot Before I forgot Inshallah I will have Class on Ihya Ulumuddin every Saturday After Asar In Khadijah Mos So good Alhamdulillah I can sell my product <laughs> But it's free of charge huh? Free of charge, just come. I don't want any payment. So you give me so I want. The most important thing, you all, you all come to 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 learn this book. Every Saturday after after Asar, please come. Do come. If we get this kind of crowd every Saturday, it will be good. Alhamdulillah. So try to make yourself free on every Saturday. But Saturday we have a fake class first. We read on fake. After the fake class, we will read on Ihya. About 20 minutes to to half an hour. Those who are interested can just come. No need to register. No need to uh, like the seminar uh, to register online registration. No need. Everyone can can come and go. Okay. Okay. We get back to the here. 
an exposition of the way in which a man may discover the fault in his soul. Bayan al-tariq al-ladhi ya'arifu bil insan uyuban nafsi. You know that when God exalted is he wishes his servants well, he grants him insight into the faults which lie in his souls. If Allah wants good for you, you will get to see your faults in the in your soul. The faults of a man of perfect insight are never hidden from him. If you have an insight, if you have a basira in your heart, if you realized it, you will know that you have many faults. And whoever who knows his fault is in a position to treat them. Most people, however, are ignorant of the faults of their souls and might see the mote in their brother's eye but not the beam which lies in their own. Many people see the faults in other people. We love to look at the faults of other people but you don't see the fault in, your, in yourself. That is the biggest fault. The biggest fault is that to look at others and not looking, not looking at yourself. There are four ways. Okay, alhamdulillah. Today we will learn the four ways by which the man who would know the faults may do so. Okay, number one. Firstly, he should sit before a sheikh who has insight into his faults and hidden weakness, weaknesses and put him in authority over his soul and follow the instruction he gives in connection with his struggle therewith as in, is the place of the aspirant with his sheikh. This letter will ascertain this fault and explain to him the method by which they should be treated. However, such a man is hardly to be found in this case. 900 years ago, hardly to be found. Today, it's very, very difficult. I mean, one way to know your fault is to be with a sheikh. A sheikh who can guide you who can change you from the bad characteristic to the good characteristic. Those who those whoever have their sheikh, alhamdulillah, shukur to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, this is the first way eh, to know your fault. Okay, now, if let's say we don't have a sheikh, okay, we don't have a sheikh, what you can do now? Secondly, he may seek out a true perceptive and religious friend and appoint him to be the overseer of his soul so that he knows his circumstances and deeds and bring him to his attention the inner and external faults acts and traits which he finds dislikable in him this is number two you have a friend a true friend a true friend is the one who always talk about the bad things about you with you not back behind you because he wants to correct you. That is the true friend. The false friend is the one who likes to angkat you. What is angkat? Praise. Praise you. Carry you. Uh, that is the, the false friend. We see the example. <coughs> Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu used, used to say, Sayyidina Umar, may God grant him his mercy to a man who shows me my fault. Sayyidina Umar said, I want someone to show me my fault, Umar said. And he used to ask Salman al-Farisi, radiallahu anh, about his faults when they met. Sayyidina Umar, no. Number two, man. After Sayyidina Abu Bakar, is Sayyidina Umar. When they met saying, what things have you heard about me that you find dislikable? Salman pleaded to be excused answering this. Of course, huh? we just mean Sayyidina Omar come to you. Anything you find incorrect for me? What do you want to say to Sayyidina Omar? Of course, you, I will fail. If he asks me, I will fail. I will cry and fail and I will die. <laughs> because talking to Sayyidina Omar, compare yourself with Sayyidina Omar, subhanAllah. Cannot be compared. Then what he said, I have heard but when he insisted, I have heard that you once ate two kinds of food at one meal. Dia bedal nasi dua lauk lah, for example. He eat curry and chicken. Oh, just not curry and chicken, cannot. You eat uh, apa? 
dal and sambal tumis lah, for example ha, example two kinds of food at one meal and then you have two set of clothing one to wear at night and the other for the day that is your fault <laughs> subhanallah and after that Sayyidina Umar asked have you heard anything else if we kena like that wow you will get angry ya. My business I want to eat Correct or not? I got so many clothes I want to wear One clothes, two clothes, three clothes I wear Stop, subhanallah Say it now Say it MashaAllah And he said that he have not These two things He said I now renounce Omar said I throw away Now Say it Omar said that He used also to question Huzaifah one of the proper companions say, You were the convener of God's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the matter of the munafikin, the hypocrites. Huzaifa used to write, Huzaifa knew who are the munafikin in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Umar asked, Can you see any signs of hypocrisy in me? He asked Huzaifa, Do I have any hypocrisy in me? Subhanallah. If Umar said that, Speechless, we cannot say anything else. No. He said that do I have any signs of hypocrisy? <clears throat> in this way he used to accuse himself. In this way, he used to accuse himself, correct himself. When your friend tells the bad things about you, he accuses himself. Despite his great worth and exalted position for the greater a man's intelligence and position. The less impressed will he be of himself. The greater the man intelligent, the greater the man's position, the less impressed will he be of himself. He will feel nothing. That is the true man. He has great ranks, he has great position, he is very smart, and yet he feels he is nothing. That is the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the more often will he engage himself in self-accusation. Okay, these two, however, is rarely to be found. Imam Ghazali said, Sheikh and friend, rarely to be found. Few indeed are the friends who do not resort to flattery, but tell once about one's fault instead, and who harbor no envy. Among your friends, you cannot avoid have one who is jealous, or who has an ulterior motive, who deems something a fault when it is not, or a flatterer, who conceals some of your defects from you. It was for this reason that Dawud Atai renounced all human company. You don't want to friend anyone. And say, when asked why, why you don't want to have friends? What can I do with people who hide my faults from me? Inshallah. This is real Sufi. Eh? Now, nowadays, many Sapi. You know where Sapi? No? Uh, a lot of Sapi. The real Sufi, these are the real Sufi. We, are, we must follow this kind of uh, character. We must follow this kind of tariqah. This is the way to to get salvation, to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> it was ever the desire of religious people to discover their faults through being told of them by others. However, things have come to such a pass with us that the most hateful, the most hateful of all people are those who counsel us and draw our attention to our defects. Correct? Someone talk bad about us, we will hate him so much. This is the marid. We are sick. That's why we are like that. This is also expressive of a weakness in our faith. Our iman is very weak if we have that character. For bad traits of character are vipers and stinging scorpions. And was someone to tell you that under our clothes there lurk a scorpion, we could, would account this a great favor and be delighted, of course, and would occupy ourselves with removing and killing the scorpion in in question definitely we will like this person because he tell us of a of a danger he saved us from a danger yet the injury and pain it would cause the body would last no more than a day you get sting by scorpion you go to hospital finish up huh? now you get better correct okay yet the injury and pain will cause the body would last no more than a day while ugly traits of character cause an injury in the very core of one's heart which it may be feared 
will endure even after death and forevermore of for thousands of, of years. Nevertheless, we are not delighted when someone calls these things to our notice, nor do we busy ourselves with removing them. Instead, we repay the one who thus counsel us in kind and say, What about you? You also do this, that, and the other. Uh, this is us. Uh. People tell us about our fault, say, You also some what? You worse. Uh. <laughs> huh? You don't say thank you. No. We say that. Subhanallah. <laughs> so, you, you just see the miracle of this book. Uh. Correct us. Uh. Uh, it correct our, our character. This is a kind, uh, you also do this, that, and the other. So the resentment toward this distracts us from gaining any profit by his advice. This is a kind of hardness in the heart produced by many sins, which in turn are the consequence of weak faith. Therefore, we ask Allah that through his grace and generosity, he should inspire us with right guidance. Show us the fault of our soul, occupy us with treating them, and guide, it, guide us to thank those who reveal such weaknesses to us. I think the third one and the fourth one, you can read by yourself because of the uh, of the time constraint. Just a summary. The third one is to listen to our enemies because our enemy will tell our weakness. So we can know our faults from our from our enemies. That's the third one. The fourth one is that we look at people when someone do something which is bad, which is against the Sharia, which is against the adab. We put his character to our character. Are we doing that also? So that is the way. When we see someone, uh, he drink and walk. Uh, he drink and walk. Do not find his fault. Go back to you. Please. Do I drink and, and walk? For example. So these are the four ways for us to know our, to know our soul. Allah so We will stop here because of uh, Asar. So inshallah, I hope. After this, after Asar, we have to stop the we be back at uh, 5 o'clock. After that, we have a question and answer. And I hope that, inshallah, next week onwards, we can attend for uh, to recite the Ihya Al-Mundin together, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah muzidna ilman nafi'a wa amlan salih wa qalban khashya wa rizqan halalan taiban wasiyan. Bi rahmatika ya rahman rahimin. Allah wa ta'alayna wa tuhan arifin. Wa bagihna fi al-deen wa alimna ta'awil wa alimna ila sawa'i sabil. Rabbana zalamna wa sallam wa barakil lana wa tarhamna wa nakunna wa nakunna wa khasirin. Rabbana fir lana wa liwalidina wa rahamkum kama rabbawna sigara. Rabbana atina bi dunya hasana wa al-akhira bi hasana wa kina adabna. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallam wa alayhi wa sallam wa sallam wa sallam wa sallam wa sallam I apologize for any mistake. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sorry, yeah. Now reach uh, the papers. You'll pass you also the papers.